Wing of the Atheist Experience. I'm your host today, Ashley Perrian, and my co-host this week is... I am Don Alhambra del Bolero. Better you say it than me. Yes. <laughs> and the costume is obviously a clue as to what we'll be talking about a little bit today, and we'll get to that shortly. Uh, first, uh, again, welcome back. Uh, happy Halloween, everyone. It's October 31st, and we are the Atheist Experience, and we're live today. Um, we are being sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings every Sunday at Crescent City Beignets, which is on 6th Street, a couple blocks west of Lamar. Uh, those start around 11.30 and go until around 1.30, 2 o'clock or thereabouts. Uh, it's very open, very informal, very social. Uh, any atheist, atheist-friendly people, more than welcome to come out there and meet us. Uh, it's not a requirement that you be a member of the group or anything like that. Um, and that is every Sunday, 11.30 to about 2, Crescent City Beignets, 6th Street, a couple blocks west of Lamar. Um, that's every Sunday, save the third Sunday of the month, when we have our lecture series at the Austin History Center at 9th and Guadalupe. Um, that is the third Sunday of the month, starting at 12.30. I don't have the details in front of me, unfortunately, for who we have lined up for November, but we do have a speaker lined up. Um, so I will try and get that information. I meant to have it this week, and I just completely fumbled on it and completely forgot to bring it. So. Uh, but if you go to our website, atheist-community.org, uh, they have a calendar on there, and I believe that will most likely have details of it. Um, so that's uh, third Sunday in November. Uh, don't have the date in front of me. Austin History Center, 9th and Guadalupe at 1230. Uh, other regularly scheduled things that we have, every Thursday night we have Atheist Happy Hour at Antonio's Tex-Mex, which is on the southbound feeder of I-35, just south of 183. Uh, that starts at 7.30, and it's very much like the Sunday meetings, very open, very informal. Um, come down and meet some of us and just have a good time. Um, that's every Thursday night at 7.30. Um, also, every other Saturday, we have our internet audio show, Profits, which is uh, hosted on atheistnetwork.com. Uh, the host of that is Jeff D. The co-host is Dennis Lube and produced by Russell Glasser. Uh, they had a show last week, and the next one will be in a week from now, basically on Saturday. Um, and that's at 2.30, or 2 <coughs> to 3.30. Yep, 2 to 3.30. Um, every other Saturday, atheistnetwork.com. It's an MP3 stream. Also, if you go to our website, atheist-community.org, and click on the Nonprofits Radio link, there's about the last half dozen episodes or thereabouts at the site. Uh, you can download them and listen to them there. Um... All right, I believe for our regular announcements, that is it. Uh, we are going to take a quick foray over to the Spanish Inquisition. See. Si. And uh, see what you have for us this week. Yes, well, as I have said, my name is Don Alhambra del Bolero, and I have come to you from 16th century Spain through what I have since learned is known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge in the space-time continuum, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> Uh, I was a high-ranking official in the Spanish Inquisition, and I understand that today is the day when children across your 21st century America will be, uh, uh, will be going out celebrating this custom that you know as Halloween. So, in honor of this uh, ritual, I have picked out the scariest costume that I could locate. Uh, and I would like to talk to you today about uh, the customs of my place and time. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, back in 1480, uh, the Turks attacked uh, the south Italian city of Otranto, which the Italians were an ally of ours, of course, and uh, we had been in a long-standing fight with, with uh, the people of Islam. And uh, in that attack, 12,000 people were killed, and the rest were made into slaves. Uh, now, uh, because there was concern all over Europe about a repeat of this episode, our uh, Spanish king and queen, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, established the Spanish Inquisition. You may recognize these names as uh, the people who also financed Columbus's famous uh, voyage to America. 
Uh, the reason that the Inquisition was originally set up was to deal with the, pro the very special problem of the people who, would, who might be pretending to become Christians, you see, but not really converted, and therefore they might be a political threat because they would open the gates to the next Turkish attack. Uh, the old, not a real Christian <laughs> argument. See, si, see. Si. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, of course, uh, technically, the we, the Spanish Inquisition, had no authorities over practicing Muslims and Jews, only over professed Christians who might be suspected of being fakes and therefore a threat to the country. Uh, so, we remained operative in Spain up until the 19th century. You may think of this as some sort of quaint medieval thing, but in fact it lasted over 300 years. Um, so, of course, uh, we... we <laughs> Sorry about this. I don't know if I can keep up this accent much longer. You, you know, a, a funny sidebar. I have, I have heard people say that uh, my Spanish accent sounds to some people occasionally like it is slipping into a Russian accent. But uh, <laughs> there's a good explanation for this, which is that I come from, as I said, 16th century Spain, and uh, there's a different dialect from what you people in the 21st century may be used to hear. I'll forget it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so basically the Spanish Inquisition was founded on the notion that Jews and Muslims might con pretend to convert to Christianity while secretly believing in their heart that, that they should still cling to the old religion. And, you know, getting to the bottom of what people secretly believe in their heart, it's kind of a questionable proposition. Okay. You never really can be sure. So, um, that's why the Spanish Inquisition, uh, under the banner of, of the government of Spain and the Catholic Church, uh, decided that it, it was uh, within their jurisdiction to go and can persuade these people. <laughs> To really convert. Good cop, bad cop method. Yes. Well, in this case, it was more like bad cop, bad cop. Uh, Tomas de Torquemada uh, is a famous name in the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, he came in after the first five years of the Inquisition where, where they hadn't really produced that many results. And uh, according to this website, uh, which I had pulled up, he was brought in to, uh, you might say, whip them into shape. Uh, under his rule, thousands and thousands of heretics were burned at the stake throughout the duration of the Spanish Inquisition. The exact numbers are unknown. There was no such thing as an alleged heretic under the Inquisition's reign of terror. There were only repentant and unrepentant heretics. Mm -hmm. Repentant heretics were those who confessed their heresy and, of course, agreed to give a whole lot of money to the church. Uh, poor people... Uh, unfortunately didn't have that many options, uh, but they could usually get off by, uh, you know, naming their other friends who might happen to be heretics. Ah, uh -huh, yes. And, and giving us additional leads, you see. Um, and, of course, uh, you may be familiar with the fact that in order to assist people in repenting, we in the Inquisition developed many methods of torture which uh, are some of the most famous torture methods in history. Um, and I thought it appropriate on the day of Halloween to uh, read some of these scary things that they did. But I'm going to warn you that uh, there are some very graphic descriptions in here. Yep. I'm going to try to tone them down for your 21st century ears. <laughs> but if you have any young, chil young and impressionable children or any young and... any old and impressionable adults <laughs> turn us off for like 10 minutes. Okay, this is what the Spanish Inquisition did in order to elicit confession. We, first of all, we have a nice little torture device known as the Judas Chair. Now, I'm not going to describe this in too much detail, but basically it's a pyramid-shaped seat uh, that people were sitting above, tied to 
ropes. Okay. And then they would slowly lower you onto the point of the pyramid yeah. and keep lowering you if you get my drift. <laughs> Uh, next we have the head vise, which is a pretty straightforward concept. They would put your head between, well, <laughs> they would put your head in a vise and slowly tighten the thing. Mm. And this was all to get people to love Jesus. Yes, quite. Uh, to, to establish a, a personal relationship with the <laughs> Lord, as you might say. Next, we have the pear, which was a large bulbous gadget that was inserted into the orifice of choice. Uh, that could be the mouth, or I'll leave the other possibilities to your <laughs> fevered imaginations. Uh, this would be, uh, and so they insert this, and then a lever would then cause it to slowly expand, and then when it expanded it to a certain level, some points would slowly emerge from the tips. Um, there, there was actually a uh, sort of a rule that the Inquisitors could use any torture method they could come up with as long as they didn't break the skin, but apparently uh, internally doesn't count. Ah, so I was going to say spikes typically are yes. going to break skin. Yes, correct. Wow. Uh, okay. And finally we have the wheel where heretics would be stepped to a big wheel and their bones slowly, uh, well... It's not very creative, but it was extremely effective. Mm. These uh, are some very, very sick puppies. This, yes, um, we were, we were. <laughs> <laughs> Just, but all in the name of... of uh, <laughs> yes, the love of Jesus. Quite so. But uh, just to <laughs> contemplate that people actually seriously contemplated these things, let alone carry them out. But just some somebody was out there and thought, hmm, this is a good way to get converts. Yes. Well, <laughs> or find out those who propose to be converts or whatever. True enough. Now, uh, it, uh, I've noticed that uh, many Protestants are quick to blame the, the you know, sort of brush the uh, matters like the Crusades and the Inquisition under the rug by saying, well, that was the Catholic Church. And, and we all know that they're bad. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, this is kind of a cop-out because in the early 16th century, there were no Protestants. All Christians were Catholics, mm. essentially. Okay. Uh, Martin Luther posted his uh, 95 theses to create Protestant, w I mean, which would eventually lead to the creation of Protestantism in 1518, and by this time, the main reign of terror of the Spanish Inquisition was already sort of winding down. Uh, as a matter of fact, though, there were three inquisitions uh, throughout different historical periods. There was a medieval inquisition it, starting in 1184. Uh, there was the Spanish Inquisition, which is, of course, the most famous, that uh, the main part of it that you're familiar with uh, as the torturous part lasted from 1480 to 1517. And there was also a Protestant Inquisition, 1553. Uh, was the beginning of it. Um, and the Protestant Inquisition was really, you don't hear about it as much, but it really, uh, went after it kicked off in 1553, was pretty bad. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, Calvin, who spawned a famous sect of, uh, of Protestantism known as Calvinism, tried sought to persecute heretics, and especially Roman Catholics, so as to keep Protestant believers in the land divided by the Reformation faithful to his new teachings. He viciously persecuted the Spaniel, Spaniard Michael Servetus, having him burned alive on October 27, 1553. As early as 1545, Calvin had written, if, if Servetus comes to Geneva, I will never allow him to depart alive. And he kept that promise. Martin Luther... Um, Martin Luther uh, has a quote that's where he said, uh, whoever teaches otherwise than I teach condemns God and must remain a child of hell. But I don't see why that quote's in there. Mm. Never mind. Uh, but King Henry the, the Eighth of England uh, took it upon himself to, uh, to take on the role of the Roy Grand Royal Inquisitor 
taking the lives of 72,000 Catholics, many of them cruelly wow. tortured in the grand total of persons. Uh, sorry, many of them cruelly tortured. Uh, the grand total of uh, persons killed by the Inquisition in 331 years was estimated between 3,000 and 5,000. Wait. He killed 72? Yeah, he killed 72,000 <laughs> Catholics. This. I'm wondering... Yeah. Uh, it's Spanish Inquisition they're talking about. Is that, yeah, the total Inquisition? Obviously, I should one. have done better research, <laughs> but I am not used to this Internet thing, you know. <laughs> Uh, Queen Elizabeth I uh, proved herself King Henry's daughter by putting to death more people in one year than the Spanish Inquisition had done in 331 years. Wow. There's an accomplishment. Yeah, quite so. So when you're talking about the, when you're talking about the Inquisition, don't just foist it off on one, per one small brand of crazies. Mm. So, and that's something uh, that went on for 300 years, killed... Over 70,000 people. Exactly. And had some of the most cruel and horrific tortures ever devised by man. Right. <laughs> or at least some of the earliest. Sick, sick people. Yuck. So, well, happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> and it is Halloween. Yes. And the uh, modern Christians are uh, don't do those kinds of things. That, you know, no, of course not. Wouldn't say that we they do. But... Uh, they do do other things which are funnier than, uh, <laughs> y you know, slowly lowering people onto a pyramid-shaped chair. Yeah. And less lethal, too. And, and we ought to give them props for that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this year, evangelical Christians have decided that instead of boycotting Halloween... Oh, I, I, should, uh, I should explain that uh, there's, there's sort of a movement in mo modern Christianity to denounce the holiday of Halloween. Ah, uh, of course. Which, of course, the name Halloween comes from All Hallows' Eve, and that was a Catholic holiday yeah. uh, honoring the saints. And uh, in, in Mexico, today is the Dio de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead. Uh, but... Halloween actually, like many Christian holidays, comes from an older, uh, I think it was a, a Celtic tradition, although some callers will probably call me on that and say that I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, anyway, this year, evangelical Christians don't want to boycott Halloween so much as take advantage of it by slipping Bible verses into kids' candy bags. As kids sift through their loots, loot, many little Batmen and Dora the Explorers you can I, you can use my real name now. <laughs> <laughs> Russell was, Glasser, in, in case you hadn't noticed. The joke was funny for about two minutes. <laughs> this year, as kids sift through their loot, many little bat men and Dora the Explorers might find verses from Deuteronomy or 1 Corinthians among the candy corn. That's because many evangelical Christians, who have always had a shaky relationship with the occult-laden Halloween, have decided that instead of boycotting the holiday, they're going to take advantage of it to spread their uh, message of salvation through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. There are a few occasions where, when you have people coming to your door asking you for things, says Jeff Dennis, Vice President of Publishing Services for Good News Publications, which turns out 8 million Halloween-inspired gospel tracts e each year. So it provides easy access to sharing the good news that we have. We're always looking for chances to share our faith, said Mar says Mark Brown, Vice President of Marketing for the country's oldest tract publisher, the American Tract Society. This is the only time of the year when you can do this legally. <laughs> <laughs> Not true, actually. You no. can hand out tracts to any kid anytime you want to. Of course. Uh, it's just they won't have any reason to come knocking on your door asking for stuff. Right. The tracts themselves are designed to speak directly to kids, filled with brightly color colored cartoon illustrations and written with the lively colloquial tone of a Saturday morning uh, public service announcement. Uh, costumes are cool, but heaven is awesome, reads one uh, ATS tract. Another, which calls Jesus the ultimate superhero, tells kids, look at his birthday on the calendar. It's Christmas. <laughs> Gotta be a hero to do that. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Good news makes ample use of puzzles in word games. If there are activities, kids are much more engaged, Dennis says. And ATS has its finger on the pulse of kid culture, featuring pop popular characters like Spider-Man and Harry Potter on its tracks. I actually went to the American Tract Society website just to take a look at this, and okay. sure enough, I don't know if you can call this false mark false advertising or something because yeah. the these should be trademarked characters. Yeah, but that, that sort of right. they hand out pamphlets with like the front of the, I mean on the front it's it's a replica of the Spider-Man Two movie poster basically. Hmm. Okay. And then and then you flip inside and it's like you know Peter Parker's Uncle Ben told him that no. he had great responsibility <laughs> and <laughs> and Jesus does the same. <laughs> yeah, so something like that. <laughs> The, F the Finding Nemo tract retells the story of the hit Disney film through a Christian lens. God loves you just as Marlon loved Nemo, but Nemo's sin separated him from his father. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest and most recent innovation has been the direct packaging of tracts with candy, stickers, or sometimes small toys like Happy Meals. Publishers agree that retaining the treat is important to the tract's acceptance by children. Kids out there are looking for candy, Brown explains. If you hand them a tract and nothing else, they'll have a negative feeling toward you and toward the tract. So you want to give a really good piece of candy, don't jip the kid, then when they dump the bag, their eyes just pop out and they'll associate this with the candy. And parents will associate it with five-year-olds on sugar highs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you see, it is all about positive and negative connotations. It's sort of similar to what we use. They learned that if you accept Jesus Christ, then, then you get candy. Well, we taught that if you don't uh, accept Jesus Christ, your bones will slowly be crushed on a, turn, on a rotating wheel. <laughs> Oh, Karen stick method. It's completely different. <laughs> uh, I mean, completely the same. <laughs> uh, of course, we, uh, as atheists and not members of the Spanish Inquisition, no. <laughs> uh, are highly entertained by these tracts. And Ashley here has brought a nice little collection. Yep, and the Halloween I've related. Printed one. out some of my favorite highlights. There's actually some new Jack tr Chick tracks out this year, which I found by going to chick.com. Uh, let's see, I've, I've printed out some of the panels here, if you want to zoom in on these. I've got uh, it away the phone, too. Yeah. So, basically, in this cartoon, you have the scary, ugly teacher, who, unfortunately, I forgot to print out a picture of her, but oh. she's made an appearance in a lot of, in a lot of uh, tracks lately. Uh, she tells the kids that they have to participate in this uh, Halloween thing, and, and this adorable little doe-eyed girl is also a regular character. Yeah. Uh, you know, the bane of Miss Hen's existence. Yes. Uh, and she's telling this other girl here, uh, this other girl says, I'm afraid of ugly things like ghosts, monsters, and spiders. Why is Halloween like that, Susie? And Susie says... Because it belongs to the devil, Buffy. It's his night, and the witches love it. Oh, that's awful. How did it get like that? And then she tells kind of a funny story. Of Ten years <laughs> later, Buffy went on to save Sunnydale. Yes, no, a different Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> she tells this adorable little story about, about how druids started the holidays for their hideous pagan rituals. Ah, yes. And then... Um, Let's see, in the end she says, but what about trick or treat? Where did that come from? And little Susie says, well, pagan priests would go house to house demanding an offering of food for their gods. And then here in this panel, they're saying, we have no food. Then we'll take the child. The trick was to take their kid for human sacrifice. Wow. <laughs> Those wacky <laughs> druids. I bet that. They were a blast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they also, you know, threw eggs at people's cars. That, that was Yes, better. and toilet papered their trees. <laughs> yes, and sacrificed <laughs> children. <Their> kids. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is Jack Chick's view on uh, the origin yeah. of Halloween. Yeah. And sadly, I neglected to look up the real origin of Halloween because I was too busy looking up disgusting things to say about the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Much more interesting. 
then we have some actual examples of tracks, like this one that we had at the beginning of the show. Uh, let's see. Oop, other side. Haw, haw, haw. That's a staple uh, of Jack Chick tracks. Yes, he loves the devil. and That's right. Little masterful devil. Yeah, here, here's a little kid, maybe not necessarily the same one, but the same little doe-eyed thing. This tract is uh, specifically aimed at children. Uh, in one panel, hang on. <laughs> here, here we go. In one panel, this little kid takes off his mask and says, everybody's afraid of the devil. And she says, not me. How come? Because Jesus loves me. Yeah, she's got Jesus in her heart. This is cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's not adorable. especially now, nice, but. <laughs> and and they all end, of course, with this. Uh, the classic scene. Yes, with this. I probably have to go back to page, go. but. <laughs> they all end with the kids accepting Jesus Christ and uh, and having a little shiny light around them and living happily ever after and reputing repudiating the horrible holiday of Halloween. Uh. Or they end with uh, people forgetting to accept Jesus Christ and dying and screaming horribly in the tortures of hell in the last panel. Uh, which and is then, this one. Yes. And here they have, <laughs> you could see they've got the guy praying down saying, oh, forgive me, oh, Lord Jesus, and stuff like that. Right. And then the one next to it, if you don't do that, you'll burn in hell with the devil. Yes. So, now this, that's the this, one. this one is called Boo. <laughs> I, I think Chick produces one of these every year. Um, and this one is styled to be uh, sort of like a horror movie. You've got the kids all going up to the, let's see, you've got the kids all going up to the lake, and uh, this one guy says, anybody who's anybody from Salem High School will be here. Charlie, I know why you got this place so cheap. Why? Because last Halloween, 13 people were murdered here. And then they go through their little... Uh, they go through their little Halloween uh, scary story. And then in this panel, it's revealed that who is the scary killer wearing the pumpkin mask? Oh my God, it's the devil! Hey, can we get a little closer on that? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> and what does he say? Uh, surprise! Oh no, run! It's the devil himself! And then a little later, this this heroic kid comes along who says... The Lord rebuke you, Satan. I hate you, and I hate your lousy birthday. And <laughs> Satan runs screaming because he's afraid of people saying the word rebuke, I guess. Uh, anyway, th those are my favorite Halloween chick tracks. And I'll go over one of mine here, too. Okay. Why not? This one's the Happy <laughs> Halloween one, which you saw at the beginning. And I do want to get one pane in here. It's this one right here. Ah, yes, that's it. You can get a little bit closer on this one. Um, it shows the pic. It, it's got some kids out there doing Halloween trick or treating and such. And one of them runs out into the road and gets hit by a car. Screech thud. So it's it's quite graphic. Ah, yes, yeah, so we can't focus. But anyway, uh, so unfortunately it's, for him, he, that kid didn't accept Jesus, right? Exactly. That so was I, that was Timmy who ran out in front of a truck, in front Timmy, of a car. Yes, during trick or treating. Who was afraid of a haunted house that was a little too scary, exactly. so he ran away and got hit by a car. Exactly. <laughs> and the kids are all sorry, and they're also sad. And it goes back to one of the parents' house where somebody has come over to help console them. Interesting word there to use, console. If I had listened to you, Mom, Timmy wouldn't be dead. At least he's in heaven, right, Mrs. Baxter? And then Mrs. Baxter, our lovely Christian lady from the track, says, Oh, I wish he was, Bobby. I cried all night when I heard he was dead. I love that boy. Uh, and basically goes on to say, But he refused to repent in his sin, for, of his sins and his love to Christ. Um, he was more concerned with impressing his worldly friends, so he quit Sunday school. And then goes on to say, <laughs> Yep, he's burning in hell. So, interesting consolation prize you got there. Yes. So. One, one of the things I always love, and can you zoom way, way in on this panel? I don't know this if one get panel? Any closer, but we'll um, try. One of the things I always love to point out about these chick tracks is that um, they actually, uh, part, part of what they show 
is people handing chick tracts to other people. Ah, uh, yes. So, so in this panel here, uh, the kid is asking for candy, and the nice Christian lady is slipping a chick tract into the into the bag right there. Right. And and if if you could if you could zoom way in, which I guess you can't even get that close, but you would see that the title of this tract is Happy Halloween, which is the same as this one. <laughs> <laughs> so he uses actual tracts, and and this just strikes me as the ultimate narcissism. It's great. It's yeah. like, well. <laughs> You know, kids of the real world aren't being convinced, but at least I can portray kids in my fictional world <laughs> as as uh, as believing my tracts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yep. Jack is a prolific author of these little cartoons. They're not all about we Halloween. Love we just have Jack. this selection. Yes, yes. They are lots and of fun. And apparently, from reports I've read, he looks a little like John Lovitz. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very secretive father, though, from my understanding. Yes. He does not come out. He does not give any, any interviews, anything like that. Um, but, yeah, he's a very wacky kind of character. That's right. So, You need the phone number, don't we? Yes, we do. We are live today. This is the Atheist Experience. And yes. if you want to go ahead and give us a call, if you've got any questions or comments. It's the scary Halloween exactly. Atheist Experience. Halloween show this time. Uh, so if you've got any questions, comments on Spanish Inquisition, Jack Chick, Halloween, any kind of questions. If you have questions on the Spanish Inquisition, I shot my load there. <laughs> I told you everything I know. Has everything, but we will but, try. No, I have a little more printed out, which I can sort through, but that makes lousy television. Yeah, if we need to go through it, we can. But if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and give us a call, and we will try and get you on the air. And um, speaking of that, though, there is one, sir, I can go over really quickly. Yes. Um, a couple years back... Uh, the host of the show at the time was Martin Wagner. I was the co-host. And during this time, uh, one of the churches in town had a virtual hell house. Um, you may have heard of these a couple times. It's the Christian version of a haunted house. Uh, they basically have scenes. You kind of walk through different scenes. And uh, you walk through one, and it's a scene of a drug deal gone bad and people getting shot. And then another one of a family <coughs> beating where, you know, the dad's on the couch getting drunk and he beats the mother. And the daughter runs into the next room and commits suicide by slitting her wrist. The Columbine shooting, drugs, abortion, they've got all this kind of stuff in there. And it's usually accompanied by buckets of fake blood, strobe lights, smoke machines, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the production values were actually pretty high, right? Yeah, yeah, they're usually pretty good. Hmm. Um, and then, so they'll take you through all of this, lead you down into hell where they've got the fake flames and the, the seven-foot-tall guy dressed up as Satan and everything, saying that... Um, Basically, when we went there, they had this loud audio playing of um, Pascal's Wager. You had better be right if you're living like there's no God and there's no Jesus, because this is what awaits you if it doesn't, if you're wrong. And so you go down and see the devil. Um, and then they lead you out into this bright white room with the, the, the curtains on the wall and candles lit and the podium up front. And you sit down for about five minutes and hear a little sermon about how this is all the bad stuff in this world and how this, this life sucks and you should just accept Jesus and everything will be better. They then invite you to stand and pray. And then it's all over with, assuming that you have converted, of course. <coughs> um, who wouldn't be? Exactly. Um, well, apparently, <laughs> me, Martin, and a few other members of the ACA went down there and, well, I'm now hosting a TV show, so... Um, but anyway, this is based on, uh, there was a documentary a couple of years back called Hell House, which was a Texas production, um, and basically it was the original one of these. Uh, they have a kit that they sell saying, if you want to do it, here's a script, here's how big the building needs to be, here's the different scenes that you can act out. It's, it, it pretty much takes you step by step how to produce the whole, diff whole, the whole show. Um, well, in Los Angeles, Hollywood is doing one now. They've apparently been doing it for a couple of years. Hollywood's version of Life in Hell closes on Halloween, ending one of the most popular plays in town, a show where stars vied to play Satan and the theater goers reeled from graphic scenes of rape, abortion, suicide, cannibalism, and loud heavy metal music. <laughs> Called Hollywood Hell House, the show is a revival of an earnest morality play. Um, they take it, the Christians take these very seriously when they put them on. Um, but this one is played as a parody in Los Angeles with Miracle of Miracles, not a single word change. They play it exactly like everyone else. 
but with a rotating cast of celebrities, including Bill Maher, Penn Jillette of Penn and Teller, um, and Richard Belzer playing Satan. Um, Those are a bunch of really cool people. Exactly. It's got some big names in it. Um, and I just love the quote at the end. Um, this, this play, by the way, was financed for $15,000, so it's, it's a fairly hefty show. Um, now, this is a show and not a haunted house that you can go through. You don't, you don't get like grabbed by Bill Maher or anything. No. Um, the one, I don't know how this one works. I haven't seen it. But the one that we had here in town that we went to, they kind of lead you through in groups of six or mm -hmm. thereabouts. And they kind of walk you through and sit, sit down, you know, stand and watch this one from over here. And everything happens. They lead you on to the next room. And you watch that one. You lead you on to the next room and so on. Um, but this one, the quote at the end is just priceless. As for devout Christians and true believers attending the show, Roe says she did not run into any problems. One night, she had a group of 30 arrived. Um, they were Christians who came thinking it was a real hell house. They thought it was great, but they didn't understand why people were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and when me and Martin went to this, we had a great time. It was just a lot of fun. Um, we ended up getting into a 20-minute debate when we left. We didn't start this. We, we went there just to see what it was all about, have fun, and talk about it on the show. Um, but on the way out, uh, we got pulled over by some, by some guys who work it with cameras and got into a long 20-minute debate that drew quite a crowd that's out front. Part. No, that's uh, the best part, isn't it? So <laughs> it, was, it was great fun. I, I, I loved it. So, uh, but yeah, that was a couple years back. But like I say, they're doing it in Hollywood as a parody. Um, and some people can't tell the difference. So. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway. Uh, we, we just lost a caller on line one, but I saw that he was going to ask why I'm wearing a cross no. if I'm an atheist. <laughs> and the answer is check your calendar. <laughs> Today is the day when people dress up in scary costumes, and once again, I am a rep of the Spanish Inquisition. Yep, can't get any scarier than that. See. So. All right, uh, but we do have a couple of cars lined up. Again, this is the Atheist Experience, and we are live on Halloween. So if you want to go ahead and give us a call, please do, and we'll get you on the air. Uh, we have got... <laughs> John, you there? Yes, here I am. Uh, Hi, thanks John. for calling. Uh, I just boy? want you guys to realize that right behind both of you to Ashley's right and... Uh, and Russell's left. the The curtain. The curtain is in the shape of a devil. Oh if you my can gosh. look behind you, it has two horns sticking up in either direction. Oh, I see right there. Can you see that? On yeah. The, okay. On the I see screen? It now. <laughs> I, I started listening to you, and I thought, wow. And it has kind of a one eye sort of. The devil is one eye. Okay, wait. Shoulders. I'll take what care of this. What a perfect Halloween thing. I mean, I, I don't know how you hang the curtain or what what the, the process is, but hey, it turned out to He's look our buddy, like. right? Yeah. Uh, that was a flu. <laughs> uh, here, I'll take care of this. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. I hate you, and I hate your lousy birthday. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. It, it was so humorous to, to look and see that. I, I think you guys are doing a great job, and I never laugh so much at the beginning of a show. Oh, it's you. when, uh, uh, Russell, you, you did that introduction. That was that was great. Thanks. Thank okay. You. Have anything else for us? Uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you know, I, can't, I can't tell if my jokes are working unless you laugh. So it's <laughs> no, no, no. You laugh, but they're good. <laughs> they're good. Your jokes are good. Okay. Thanks a lot for calling. Okay. Well, that's something I didn't notice or didn't certainly didn't intend on. <laughs> if you're back here, it certainly doesn't look like the no, devil. No, not so. at all, but we can see it on the screen. Yes, he's watching over our shoulders, protecting us. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Just to clarify, we don't believe in the devil. Exactly. I mean, We're not we, devil worshippers any more than we God We shouldn't even have to bother saying so. that, but sometimes people <laughs> get Just the wrong never idea. Know. This is an educational show, so if you thought we don't worship the devil, we don't. Um, anyway, uh, this is a live call-in show. Go ahead and give us a call. Phone number is on your screen. We have got Jay. Assuming the show is live. Of course. <laughs> we rerun sometimes, so it might not be on your screen. But, Jay, you there? Yes, I am. Okay, what you got for us? I always hear lately with your politicians about marriage as being for the purpose you know, of recreating children and all that. So yeah. the ministers, so is your priest. Here's a story that's burns me up when I hear it because it's true and my, it was my neighbor's daughter. She got married at 20. Six days after her 39th birthday, she died. 
Hmm. From the day that she had was married until she died, there were 17 children she gave birth to. Wow. She was Catholic. Her husband was always real strong-headed and everything. The daughter had begged for a have her tubes tied or something to stop from having children. Yeah. No, God gives us these children. B.S. He would, if he did, he wouldn't have let her have so many and killed her. Wow. And that's my opinion. Of it. And, I mean, this is pathetic when you hear ministers and now you got your politicians saying that's the purpose of marriage is for, is for that. So I don't believe that this is really true. And if this is the whole, uh, you know, as you would say, for within the religious factor that God gives it to you, yeah. then something's wrong with religion. If you yeah, don't well, it. I mean, if, if the purpose of marriage was children only, then I guess people who go through menopause would, should be forced to get a divorce. Exactly. If you're past menopause, you can't get married. If you're infertile, you cannot get married. Um, right. That kind of thing. If, if, if that's what they honestly believe, then that's what you've got to go on. If you get married, you must have a child. I know that you can't choose to be childless. Because I knew so. another one that was young, and they they couldn't have children, and it they had to go get a, uh, something from the Pope so they could get a divorce, so she could have. It was the men that couldn't oh. have the children, so then later he said that what since me marrying. I've heard it so many times, and this is it's sick. In yeah. the sense of saying that that's really the fact of religion is this, 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 all about childbirth. It's not. It's your ability to have one and how compassionate and whatever happens in your physical change and at certain times you can become pregnant. Yeah. It's not, I don't think it's got Marriage is a commitment between two people. So Kids maybe, are not necessarily part of that. <laughs> so. so that's what aggravates me and you see so many young kids out here producing yeah. Day in, day out, yeah. without actually being married. So I don't see where it really is, has a, you know, for yeah. a religious okay. purpose. Right. Thank you. All right. Did you have anything else for us? Yes, not. That would be enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, phone number is on your screen. Uh, we are live today. It's October 31st, Halloween. Um, <laughs> yes, very evil. The atheists are on your te television <clears throat> set on Halloween. How much worse could it get? Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, ooh, yes, something to plug for. I completely forgot about this. Um, on Tuesday, I believe it is, uh, we are having a presidential election. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. So, that thing. So if you have done your early voting, that is a good thing. <laughs> Um, if you haven't had a chance to, there will be voting on Tuesday, I'm assuming in the yes, precinct. From 7 o'clock to 7 o'clock in your precinct. Go wow, to, it's just uh, open 7 to 7. Yeah. Okay. Well, just kind I, of, mean, it I kind to, of assumed it would be open a little later than that. But. Yeah, but I mean, it has to. every uh, state has a closing time that's fairly early because, you okay. know, unless we have a repeat of 2000, <laughs> <laughs> we'd like to know who, <laughs> who the president will be yeah. by the evening. Yeah. So, and of uh, course, we're nonprofit, so we don't make any endorsements, and I don't even know if we agree on who we yeah, endorse. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, we're not making any kind of specific endorsement saying vote for X over Y. Right. Um, but we do definitely encourage you to get out there and vote for your candidate do vote. of choice. Voting is good. Exactly. Voice your opinions and be heard. Um, but if you go to churches, <laughs> then sometimes your preachers will have slight words to say about that. Here's one in Cheyenne. A Roman Catholic congregation is being told that voting for pro-choice candidates in next week's election would be a mortal sin. Wow. Yep. That's the, pretty serious. Uh, yep. The Reverend Tom Cronkleton of the now, Holy Trinity th Catholic This is Catholic. Uh, yes. Pro Protestants claim there aren't any mortal sins, I think. Really? Yeah. Okay. They say, I mean, That's a Catholic know. thing? Yeah, Protestants are more sort of uh, touchy feely, yeah, like you know, as long as as long as you have <laughs> faith uh, in okay. the end. I, I mean, you know, yeah, they differ from sect to sect. Yeah, within but that's, certain. That's my understanding. They're a little more wishy washy than some of these Catholics. Well, <laughs> Jack Chick is a Protestant, so True. I wouldn't call that wishy washy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I would call him a lot of things, but that's not one of them. <laughs> that's not one of them. Um, but yeah, anyway, they, he goes on to say, there are five preeminent issues, abortion, <coughs> euthanasia, 
fetal stem cell research, human cloning, and so-called homosexual marriage, Cronkle says, Cronkleton said. How the candidates stand is a reason to vote for or against them. Which, I would agree. Those are issues that can be important, and you can vote accordingly. Right. But he says more than they're important, right? Exactly. Um, apparently choosing the wrong way to vote is a mortal sin that you will burn in hell for all eternity if you vote, if you pull that lever a little bit incorrectly. Um, so, uh, let me see. I, I like the guy quotes from uh, churchgoers here. They, the church, are the ones who have introduced me to the love of Jesus Christ, and I feel that they have ability to give, uh, the ability to give me the complete faith, she said. As far as church doctrines, sometimes I just have a problem with them, but you've got to suck that kind of stuff up. Hmm. <laughs> which I don't necessarily agree with. If you don't agree with what your church is teaching you, you should have issues with that. You should take that up and voice your concerns and opinions and say, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. On, so. on the, uh, on the uh, audio show last week, which you should be able to download at this point by okay. going to uh, atheist-community.org, yep. Uh, we actually discussed a similar story to this, and we thought okay. it was interesting that they had five uh, principles that, that you couldn't bend. I, I mean, you know, that were yes. un... Uh, Is that the what, same What five? term did they use? You couldn't compromise on yeah, them, the, basically. Yeah, the preeminent issues. Right. So. But they didn't mention the death penalty yes. in the list. Which yeah. is interesting, because actually both candidates are pro-death penalty. There's a statement on John Kerry's website about the death penalty, okay. uh, and they may dis disagree about the applications, but both of them are basically for it. And uh, if they're absolutist about abortion, they ought to be absolutist about the death penalty by the same token. And yeah. yet, you know, they're not going to bother... Um, yeah, they Making that, that something you can't compromise on because you have no choice. Yeah, that, that would eliminate <clears throat> their candidate of choice. Right. And that shouldn't be an issue because they should say, look, here are our standards. You must agree with these. And so that if that means that you have to vote for a write-in candidate yes. or one of the lesser, you know, lesser known, not the big two parties, then you have the option of doing that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what's funny about this is that they pretend that these standards are objective, but exactly. they get to choose which standards they like exactly. based on who they really want to win. Yeah, vote on these standards and, hey, <laughs> look at who manages to fit them. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Okay. Anyway, phone number is on your screen. Please go ahead and give us a call. Uh, we have got Kevin. You there? Yes. Okay, what you got for us? Cool. I've uh, been wanting to call in for a while, but I've never actually been able to hold on the line the uh, entire time to call I'm glad in. Glad you made it. Sorry. I just want to say I appreciate uh, appreciate y'all's point of view and everything. Thank you. And uh, I just I find in my my daily life, you know, that it's uh, it's amazing how how many intelligent people are out there and how rational they are in every other aspect of their life. But when it comes to religion, they're they're so fanatically religious. Yeah. And I, I was wanting to share my experience with you guys about my experience on UT campus when I was a UT student. Yes. And um, I, I remember, you know, um, guys preaching on campus and trying to save souls and that sort of thing. And yeah. I mean, just completely like backward science and all, yeah. and having you know literature and stuff that they'd quote from. And for example, in my um, geology class, I actually had the geology professor who knew that there were going to be a lot of religious people in his class, when he started to explain um, what the science behind the creation of the world and the different sedimentary layers and the fossil record, if people were going to have a problem with that, he wasn't going to be able to continue really to teach them. So he said, yeah. this one Saturday, why don't you all, all come with a bag lunch and we'll have a discussion. And uh, so, I mean, that was just an example of what the extremes that, you that know, intellectuals cool. on the UT campus have yeah, to go I, to combat. I actually had a similar experience. I took an evolution class in San Diego, and the professor said, uh, look, there is controversy, but it's not scientific controversy. Right. It's all religious in nature. I'm not going to talk about it. So my, I, have a, I have a question for you guys. I wonder, like, uh, how you guys feel about Shouldn't there be stronger opposition I mean, obviously, being an atheist isn't a religion, so we don't really proselytize being atheist. But at the same time, you already have so many people uh, trying to convince people to be Christians and be religious. Shouldn't there be a stronger opposition 
to uh, religious ideas. Mm. Should and there be? So maybe maybe atheists would be a little bit more. There would be less a stigma, and people would be yeah. braver yeah. to come out and say they were atheists. Yeah, there definitely should be a little more education out there, and a little more. Uh, intellectual honesty, I, I'm not too sure exactly what to call it, um, better scientific teaching, for instance. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly don't hide my atheism. Um, <laughs> it's kind of past that point. Um, it took me a long time before I could I could <clears throat> say to myself I was an atheist, even though I, I already was for a long time. Yeah. If, if you're asking if people should be, uh, you know, if there should be restrictions on how on where and when you should proselytize, I would say no, not really. No, I, I'm I just mean, saying I think we it's should. It's a have, freedom of speech issue. We should it, have our own creatures out there, and we should have our own people, you know, standing side by side these other people who are voicing an opinion of ideas, religious ideas. Yeah, we should have the other point of view out there, you know, and just just as strongly, yeah. well, so people can make you know. I wish there was a lot more. That's uh -huh. what this TV show is for. Yeah, that's kind of um, what we're doing here. I. I Love to hear of other ideas that that could be done. Um, you know, standing like on a pre you guys standing on the have corner like and a preaching. debate with with some of these people. Have you ever seen? They even have shows. They even broadcast their their little sermons on the UT campus on public access. Would you guys be like? Would you guys be interested in having a having a show where you're debating debating these guys? Um. <laughs> I've heard that both ways, and I've actually been in the middle of one. Um, there's a show called. Uh, uh, oh jeez, I can't I remember. remember. You now. were on a show. Um, yeah, it was it was one of the Christian shows on Channel Eleven, I believe it is, um, where they were doing a show about faith and atheism and stuff like that. And so I was I came on as their token atheist, um, and we debated on the show. And then a, a couple months ago, uh, Don Baker, one of our co-hosts on this show, uh, also went on there and talked about atheism and such. Um, let me see. Uh, yes, Regeneration TV show. That was the name of it. I right. forgot. Um, but yeah, we, it's kind of hard to tell. I think when we went on, it went fairly well. I didn't. In general. <laughs> I it watched didn't. it, and uh, yeah. I think that if you go on a show where a Christian controls the format, um, they tend to do sneaky, underhanded things, yeah. like present their last argument uh, in the last ten, you know, their big argument in the last five seconds of the show, and then say, "Oh, show's over. Sorry, we couldn't let you answer that one." Which is what happened when I and when Don on them both times that we went on, they brought up something that was <laughs> irrefutable in five seconds. Right. And they brought it up in the last ten seconds of the show and said, "Well, you haven't disproved it, so guess it's true." Yeah, yeah that's I, the, I mean, that's the way in, any kind of in written debate debates. <laughs> I, I think if you would go online to news groups, you would see that in written debates, atheists almost always clobber Christians, or I mean, it, or tend to anyway. If you yeah. look at alt atheism and stuff, yeah. um, I could but, see though possibly if you had some kind of equal forum, uh, a controlled uh, situation possibly where everybody had their time to get points across that type of thing, it could be an interesting thing. Uh, some people are against it because. Scientists in general are kind of against you know the whole evolution versus creationism debate type thing. You guys ought to just ambush one of those little preachers whenever they come up on UT campus. Yeah, and film we've it, thought about and that. They probably won't air that, but you guys could air it, and that would be. Yeah, we've thought about that actually. You know, um, they don't mind getting ambushed. I mean, you know, they they have this sort of philosophy that if you get persecuted, um, then yeah. then Jesus is happy about it. Uh, so I wouldn't say that they wouldn't air it. Yeah, look um, at look at the evil atheist ganging up and beating down the the poor, defenseless you know Christian who's out there spreading the word and the gospel. Right. I mean, I part part I of ha part really of having silly, a faith based mentality. <laughs> in my view, part of having a faith based mentality is, uh, means that you get to believe you're right, even if the cl facts clearly say otherwise. Yeah. So you know there. Even if you were to say something in an argument that sounds pretty good, they would just say, well, you know, that's the devil or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right, well, thanks for having me on. Okay, thanks a lot for calling. Uh, right. And if you're an atheist or atheist-friendly, which it sounds like, uh, you ought to come down to uh, Crescent City Beignets on exactly. Sunday, anyone, Sunday mornings. Anyone who's watching. Um, Check our website. 
Exactly, uh, they've got details on there. Atheistcommunity.org. Yep. Um, but like I said, it's a very social meeting. Don't have to be a member of the group or anything <coughs> like that. Just come down, chat with us, and meet some new folks. Um, anyway, we have got yet more callers. We have got uh, Sarah, are you there? Yes, sir. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm Fine. doing quite well. It's nice to hear from y'all. Um, well, I was raised an Episcopalian growing up, pretty strict Episcopalian. I'm not sure if you know what that means, but it's pretty close to Catholic. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I was just a little bit interested in hearing about the atheist view it is that y'all to have personally versus the view of a general atheist out there in some other state, for example. You know, is there a, you know how in Christianity there's denominations and okay. separations along those lines, which I personally disagree with. You know, I mean, yeah. either there is a God or there isn't. You're for the view, you're for the... Yeah. You're for it or you're not, pretty much, you know? I, I don't think there's too much gray area, and I was wondering if there's yeah. also a gray area within the atheist realm as well, if there's degrees of it, if there's separations or denominations, yeah. if you will. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot less than typically in, uh, you know, <laughs> the religion of your choosing. Um, it, generally, atheism is just lack of belief in a god. Now, some people will say that there's hard atheism or soft atheism or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, basically, there are some atheists out there who say that there is no God. The, okay. the concept makes absolutely no sense. It, it cannot exist. And so they take this hard line, hard-nosed approach of there's no God, period, end of story. Mm -hmm. And then there, I'm to, I count myself as an agnostic atheist. I can't prove it. You can't prove that God doesn't exist. And in my argument at least. Um, but we have absolutely no evidence, so I choose not to believe. That's mm -hmm. called typically soft atheism. Um, I'm, not, I'm not taking the hard line approach of God cannot exist. I'm saying, eh, no, nah, there's no evidence. Why bother to believe in it? Um, that's typically about the only big division um, okay. that you, that you yeah. may see in some atheists. Well, uh, as speaking for myself, I happen to be a fundamentalist uh, ecumenical atheist council of 1879. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so there, I, there's a council involved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anything no. similar to the skull and bones of councils? or <laughs> No, actually what I meant to say is um, the reason you won't find anything like denominations of atheists so much is because there is you know, almost by definition, there is no central authority of atheism. There's no atheist church. There's no atheist pope. Uh, there aren't any atheist pastors who say right, that, right. that if you, you know, there's no atheist Bible that says that you have to agree with this. Mm -hmm. So basically, all that atheists uh, believe is that they don't believe in God. Uh, on any other issue, they're pretty much across the board. Now, uh, the atheists that I know and like to hang out with tend to believe that that uh, science and logic and rationality are preferable to taking things on faith and preferable to superstitions. Uh, but that's not true of all atheists because you know you have the uh, the Raelians who are a UFO worshiping cult. No. who don't happen to believe in God, but they believe that we were put here on this earth by aliens who, who wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they claim that they're atheists, actually, uh, and I just think they're nuts. <laughs> well, it's a term that's getting um, misrepresented, misrepresented by multiple groups. Such yeah. as that cult, for example. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're an accurate representation of whatever they are. <laughs> right. And and I wouldn't say that there are true atheists and false atheists, or or you you know that that being atheist is like, you know, an article of faith. On, right. On so anything. it's just a basic stance that there isn't a god. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, since it is, I appreciate y'all trying to uh, work with me and, and help me to understand this because I'm curious about it. Okay. Okay. And well, uh, I've never been able to get through either. We have, we have a frequently asked questions page that, that Steve ought to put up. And uh, I think it's very well written, but I wrote most of it. So I'm now... <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> well, it's got some stuff from you, so I'm from Martin. Yeah, Martin so, wrote a lot um, of it, too. But okay. yeah, if you go to the website and check the fact, there's some excellent questions and answers there. Um, That's interesting. I'll, t I'll take a look at that. Okay. Uh, religious differences aside. Okay. Politically. How do y'all feel about this election? Um, can uh, we talk about that? Yeah. Not <laughs> I mean, I know that this is an atheist show, but 
in regards to mm. President Bush himself, he considers himself a Christian. He goes under that mm. guise, but yeah. at the same time, he's involved with the Skull and Bones and has a brotherhood with a brotherhood connection with the opposition. Yeah, but how many people have been in certain fraternities and stuff like that when they were in college too? I don't. Yeah, see, I'm not at that age quite yet. That. I don't happen to know amongst your older gentlemen what that ratio is like, or yeah. how many of y'all right, are doing I don't that. Know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I mean, well, well either of I don't y'all two up there on my screen were either of y'all involved in a fraternity of any type. No, I wasn't but, actually. You know, okay, fraternities so were kind of sneered at in my college. <laughs> do you have a brotherhood connection with the rest of those people still? We weren't a part of any fraternity. No. Oh. So no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, in in a general sense, uh, Bush calls a lot on God and religion and you know faithful people and stuff like that, and I don't agree with that part of it. Um, Kerry has done some of the same, pretty much. I think really to be, unfortunately, to be in the race, you have to be somewhat religious and, you know, profess it. Right. Uh, it's I, a sign I, of the times, in a way. Exactly. It's unfortunate <laughs> that, that, you know, a potential candidate can't get up there and say, you know, I don't believe in God, but I respect everyone's right to believe and their right to do, you know, how, worship however they want, and I will protect that. But me personally, I don't believe in God. Um, I think it would be great if somebody could say that, but um, in our in our climate today, uh, that person would be shot down real fast. I'd like to make a point on that uh, on that note. You were saying preference, basically, Re your religious preference. Okay. Okay. Take that term with me and extend it to an extreme. For example, the sexual preference that we have now in our society. People are commonly referring to, oh, that's just his or her sexual preference. When does it cross the line over to, that's just perverse? When it, when it harms people, yeah. basically. I mean, you know, people, people who are opposed to homosexuality often say things like, well, you know, if we let uh, men and men get married, then pretty soon we're going to let men and boys get married. Yeah. Is there any particular chance? I don't, I don't think that's true because, you know, there, there is a clear line because a young person is not, uh, of an age where they're capable mentally of, of making those sorts of informed decisions about who to have a relationship with. But a 14-year-old in Louisiana can make that decision. Um, <laughs> is that the legal age of marriage? Is that it? Uh, it's either Louisiana yeah. or Alabama. Okay, well, okay. we can argue awesome. about what an appropriate age of consent is, but, there, yeah. but everybody agrees that there is some sort of limitation. Exactly. Yeah. And... And you know, it, yeah, I mean, drawing boundaries is always going to be a hard thing. Is it? Is it fourteen? Is it eighteen? Is it thirty-nine? Is it sixteen? Right, 16? because I mean, you get in you a situation that, where, like, an eighteen-year-old sleeps with his seventeen-year-old girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, or, or yeah. they're both seventeen, and then one turns eighteen, and then suddenly one of them is breaking the law. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's tricky. It, it all it all goes back to is somebody being harmed. Right. Now, again, I mean, I've seen some 14-year-olds that can make very good, solid decisions, and I've seen some 34-year-olds who I wouldn't trust with a butter knife. <laughs> so, you know, it, it runs the gamut. But again, drawing, now, that, drawing that line is kind of, you, you know, that's a secondary point. Concerning the atheist religion, are yeah, there any uh, other uh, <laughs> regulations about the religion other than we just don't have a God that we acknowledge? For example, yeah. is there a stance on this type of issue within the well, atheist realm? Yeah, uh, atheism is not a religion. Okay. Um, it, it's simply lack of belief in a god. And given that it is very... That's, that's the only issue with atheism. Okay. There is no god. If you do, if you do not believe in God, you're an atheist. Right. So there's no book of common prayer no, or anything. No, no. again, most, most again, atheists, individual. Yeah, most atheists that I know, <coughs> and again, this is just most, not all, are very much into a scientific worldview. They look at science to explain things, that type of thing. They don't believe in ghosts and psychic powers or anything like that. None of that precludes, you know, you can believe in psychic powers but not believe in God. Mm -hmm. It's not very common, but it's certainly a possibility. You don't need God to believe in psychic powers, life after death, or anything like that. Right. So how many understand again, that? Again, but individual, most don't. individual atheists believe their own things. I mean, exactly. uh, so it's just a general stance that there isn't a God. That's, That's it. it. Okay. It, help me to understand this a little bit further. If there isn't a God, how is it... I mean, I'm just completely overwhelmed with the chaos to order 
I mean, is that what you're essentially saying? That it, it, out of all the stuff that we have in our universe, in our great big sky, here we are with our intelligent minds, and I'm sitting on the phone on my couch talking to y'all. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I mean, so it, if problem? you go through... <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't see that happening with the chances out there. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Well, it doesn't, it, it doesn't happen. There isn't something that put it together for us. Right. It, it doesn't happen by chance. It happens by uh, basically laws of physics. I mean, you've got very simple things that happen in the universe. We may not necessarily know precisely why those specific things happen, but like take gravity. You know, any two, uh, you know, any two things, any two pieces of mass are going to be drawn together. Um, a result of that, uh, of that law of gravity is that if there's a large cloud of stuff floating around, then eventually it's going to condense into a small cloud of stuff and make planets. Um, and from all of that, we, here we are talking to each other. Yeah. There, there yeah, again, are, laws, laws there of are physics many branches of science. I mean, you know, laws of physics go through how planets and stars form. Laws of chemistry go through how sort of self-perpetuating uh, chemi chemical cycles happen. Could those not be and, the tools of God? Well, they could be, and we never said that if you want to we could if you want to that they couldn't. Yeah, if you want to redefine God as chemistry, you can do that, but it's kind of pointless. We right. already have a word for it. Is chemistry, but our but bad. our only point is but God that is encompassing all. What I'm saying that He's, uh, I'm trying to yeah, talk but, with y'all. Like but He's a little bit more involved than that. He's also our physics. He's also. But you're stepping back a point, and we have no reason to assume that. We have no evidence that there's something higher than that. Right. So right. why I mean, bother to put that step in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, no I, I'm ready for my next question. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. What do you all think about Jesus? He actually did exist. He was the well, most documented individual that we have okay, on you, record at you all. Are put it, you are putting that out there, but apart from the Bible, there's very little documentation of him in, right. in other historical records. Which is not to say that we necessarily believe he didn't exist, mm -hmm. but, but it's kind of like uh, King Arthur. There are a lot of stories told about him. A lot of them probably aren't true, and it's hard to be sure whether King Arthur really existed or not. Uh, but but you wouldn't say categorically, no, there were, never was a King Arthur. There might have been, and he might have inspired all those stories, but that doesn't mean that yeah. he drew a magic sword from the Lady of the Lake and stuff. Exactly. Right. There's a, you know, even if Jesus, even if we can go back and prove that there was a character called Jesus who did these teachings and such, I wouldn't have a big problem. I mean, okay, okay. so the Bible is based on a true historical figure, or at least the New Testament is. Well, uh, that doesn't, that doesn't study, mean that he turned water into wine. So. I would encourage y'all to read a little bit more uh, concerning the existence <laughs> of Jesus. And maybe you're well read on it or we not. We have, actually. Yeah, okay, we, good. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, I so. definitely don't want, you know, just two weirdos from yeah. Austin talk there talking about Oh, well, medicine. we are two weirdos yeah. from Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um, I would like to know... Okay, last Jesus, question. We do have some other yeah. callers lined up. Oh, so. I apologize. <laughs> I thought this was just a boring Sunday in my time. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Since Jesus did exist, and uh, well, that's wait, pretty well documented. Know, again, again, we're, we're not conceding that point. Well, do, okay, but let's get that straightened out right now. Do y'all believe he existed or not? I just told you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not something that I have looked into a whole heck of a lot. Um, I would not be opposed to the idea of, of saying that, you know, there was a character or possibly several different people that were kind of congealed over time into one character oh, wow. um, called Jesus. It's a possibility. I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I mean, apart from the Bible, which is where most of these, you know, evidence of of different yeah. people well, writing Jewish things. Scrolls, that, really, and the Jews didn't believe that he was the Messiah, but they still documented everything because, just like the uh, monks, they just no, document it for yeah, straight what it no, is. No, they didn't. There, there's actually one document that gets referred to a lot, which is uh, uh, Josephus. Jo Josephus. Uh, but a lot of uh, serious historical scholars think that that think that that part is a forgery. Oh wow! Because it it doesn't really flow with the rest of what he wrote. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, say for example, Jesus did exist. Okay, Everything okay, else let's aside, say. what what if scenario? If Jesus did exist and he performed these miracles that uh, everyone around yeah, him which, wait, uh, again, stopped, again, again you're said. putting you're putting you're putting things out there. <laughs> Uh, I know, I know. Assuming Jesus existed, I don't think that he did miracles. 
I don't think that he actually turned water to wine yeah, for these it, fish. And healed the blind Or healed the blind or made the dead it, rise. It's sort of like you're saying, okay, f just for a minute, assume that there, is an e that there is a tooth fairy and that she really does, you know, put teeth on How much pillows. is she going to leave you? I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not willing to make that assumption, right. so there's no point in arguing about what if. Yeah. Okay, I have another um, well, place well, for y'all to put me. We're going to go ahead and let you go at this point. Like I said, we've got a couple of the callers lined up, and we do want to go ahead and give them a chance. Um, but like I say, uh, our website, they have the fact on there. They've got a lot of questions and answers. That's good. Um, so I'll take my dial-up time and try and look at that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Uh, it okay, was good talking to you, though. Uh, watch again. Yes. Next week. Exactly. Every week, 4.30 to 6, Channel 10. Uh, we also have repeats on Tuesday night, uh, 4.30 to 6, Channel 10, same time and channel. Um, but if you're watching it on Tuesday, uh, this is a repeat. It is a taped show. Do not call. Uh, you will make some other show very angry. Um, anyway, let's go on to Rob. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, thanks for holding. What you got for us? Oh, I was going to ask, um, do you guys know where the origin of the word atheist came from? Pretty good idea, but... Why don't you do your stick? <laughs> no, I'm asking you. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's it's just the planet, the the joining of the what Latin or Greek? I think Greek it is. Theos. Theism is basically belief in a god. A is not not belief in God. Atheism. And uh, yeah, yeah, you're 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 right on track when you say Greek because it comes from the word Greek. It, anybody that's where Athens was created from the okay. Greek god goddess okay. of wisdom. Okay. Is athe atheist? Okay. That's where atheist comes from. Well, that's that's where theist so, comes from. So no, no, no. If you if you actually call yourself atheist, then you do believe in a god. If you oh, you caught me. I do worship the Greek goddess of wisdom. God of wisdom, exactly. <laughs> no, no. Do you see my life? Ah, I feel so stupid. <laughs> no, don't feel stupid. Um, <laughs> but actually, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um, the other lady, the other lady that just called, just that, that, that had all the the questions for you guys. Um, uh, it sounds like she believes in God and believes in Jesus, and yet yeah, she's she she's, she's kind of like uh, she she finds a lot of interest in you guys. So how do, how do you explain? What what would you explain to her to continue her search and uh, continue her search for the for the truth? And uh, I mean, what what, what, do you, what kind of advice would you give her? We're out here for education. We would like uh, people to know this is what atheists think and believe. Um, a lot of people only hear about atheism from their preacher who said atheists are just evil, <laughs> hateful people who, who you know, had something bad happen. Yeah, are you up. there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. It sounded like hung up. Um, and so, you know, we're not hateful people. We don't eat babies. Uh, nothing like that. And so, you know, we're just happy everyday people like everybody else. We just don't believe in this whole God character you, you claim is out there. Um, and so, I mean, that's a big part of it. It's just education. Now, if somebody, you know, goes farther and looks into uh, critically looking at their religious beliefs and the scientific worldview and stuff like that, and they decide to become, a, you know, atheist, or deciding to become atheist is strange. Yeah, because... But, no, but you understand no. the point that I'm trying yeah, to Yeah, why would you call yourself atheist yeah. when the word actually originates from uh, the worship, actually the worship <laughs> of a goddess of wisdom? Okay. Most people out there are making a claim that some, you know, higher being who created the universe and watches your sex no, life he's is he's asking there. why we would use that word, and that just happens to be the word. I don't know. I mean, people, you know, that, that may be what it once meant. That may be what it once meant, and I'd like to look that up and make sure that you're really right, because... I'm skeptical of that claim. No, it's, it is right. It is right. Yeah, I know. You told Athens, me that. Athens, Greece. <laughs> Athens was created long yeah. ago. Okay. And Where are you reading this? On the, on, I'm reading this from um, just from, from common sense, actually. And then Wait the, a minute. Wait a minute. You can't... What no, do you mean from I'm reading common this, sense? I'm reading this. I looked it up. In, in a, 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 it's called the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're getting that from a Christian site who's telling you that atheists worship a Greek goddess. It, it, Athens, Greece, was create was yeah. Uh, I know what it, I, was originally you called said Athens that it says that on the I website. I'm still going <laughs> yeah. to. I would rather look in a dictionary than take your word for it. Okay. that that's what the word really means. Regardless of its origin. Yeah. Uh, which, sorry, I got sidetracked. Yeah, I mean, regardless of the origin, atheism <laughs> is the word nowadays that people associate with, you know, lack of belief in a god. People who don't believe in God. People know what an atheist is. 
Yeah. That's hey, why we use it. You know how you guys were talking about the law of physics and the law of gravity? Um, do you, what do you think somebody that, that really has the, 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 the truth that is really right on with God's Word and doctrine and has studied it and has, you know, associated with his, his uh, ministry yeah. that has years and years of research that they put in through, through the Latin, through the Greek, through the okay. uh, Aramaic, through the Hebrew. They're and still studying all the book. So what do you think that somebody that believes in the, the rightfully divided word, what their view is, what their view is um, on, uh, on, on whether people, what, what, what okay, I, I lost myself. My, my question is, what do you think they, they believe is, is greater than those laws, laws of physics? What do you think, that, what, Why what do you think one I law care? is greater than that? Yeah, they think it's, it's God. Yeah, but they can think what they want to. Believing. They can think what they want to. That right. Doesn't make them right. See, the law of believing is the first law. The law of believing? The law of believing. <laughs> of, okay, okay. Uh, that, so, that's in a very different realm than physics and cosmology a, and no, chemistry. It's a positive and a negative. It's the law of making stuff up and then convincing yourself that it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I mean, you're talking about some you know, higher it, power in God high, for which well, there's it, no evidence. Yeah, because it's a higher power because you have a positive and a negative. The positive being... You God, have and apart, the negative, positive, apart from a religion, there is no such thing as the law of believing. Exactly. That's that's. Uh, it's a religious term that you're using. It's, it's a religious it's, term. It's it's a yet, term that's based on the assumption the that physics. believing stuff makes it true. No, you're li you're believing in the law of physics versus the law of creation, and that we have a creator. You're looking. You're, there is no law of. Are creation you telling me that creator. there are no laws of physics? The, 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 you know, all those laws are true, also. But I'm saying the first, tr the first law that comes before yeah, that, and they can be, and they be can be beginning. proved. There always has to be an origin. Yeah, they can be proved, or or at least shown to be true in most senses. Uh -huh. The law of gravity got some basis to it. You want to say the law of the creation of the universe by the hands of the mystical God? Exactly. No evidence for it. No. Li you want to go for you know some other. Ancient do Hindu think, belief that said that you do know. You, do you <laughs> look at, listen to this concept in the universe where where the Earth is is in is is you know the Earth is surrounded by the universe, right? What do you, do you believe? Let me ask you: Do you believe that there's actually an outer rim, and that beyond the universe is 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 another realm? <laughs> Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's like what we have. That's, to look that's at, some very loaded language. There. No, no. Listen, listen. We have we have all this to deal with. All this, all this space, all these planets, all these celestial. Yeah, bodies. which would just go to show that if there is a God, he's really inefficient with his use of space. Yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> see, that's the thing. The concept of the, he's of really the, of into the water, empty space, the womb, that's it. <laughs> the salt. The, right. the, the whole concept of the of us having a creator is is the, the proof is all around us. There really is. The proof yeah, is all around in your us. Mind. Yeah, but but again, you're looking at things in one way which we think is wrong. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Right. All right, guys, have so, a good day. Okay. Okay, nice thanks for calling. To you. So, again, I mean, you can look at, you know, coffee cups and minerals and insects and say, ooh, look at the beauty of life and creation. Um, or you could say, look at the sun, how it's a big ball of gas that's burning. You know, I mean, right. there's a lot of chaos and disorder in the universe. It's not a good place. There are earthquakes. There are a lot of bad things going on. There's Ebola. Okay. So, <laughs> we have no evidence for a higher power who created the universe, so we choose not to believe. Uh, anyway, phone number is on your screen. We've got about 10 minutes left. We are going to go on to Clifton. You there? Yeah, how you doing? Hello. Okay, what you got for us? Um, I, like, I want to ask the God in a red suit. Yes. If you call yourself an atheist, why are you wearing a costume for Halloween then? Check your calendar, dude. What's, what's today? Halloween thirty first. Halloween. Yeah. Yes. Halloween is still a. I am, it's still a fun holiday. I am wearing. Okay. Damn, a but no, hold on, hold on. Do you know what Halloween means, though? Yeah, it's a, it's a derivative of All Hallows Eve, which used to be uh, All Saints Day. Well, but then it really for Eve was well. It is amount. right. I mean, I mean it, that may be derived from an older, I, I think it was Celtic holiday, but yeah. that's that's where we get the name Halloween. It used to be a holiday. All Saints Day. Of, it used to be a holiday of the harvest, the fall harvest, to get in all the all the crops that you had grown through the year. You harvest them about now, so that's what it used to be based on. But then, it, really, it also means too about when evil, about uh, talking about evil spirits, though. Okay. If you were atheist, you won't. You, you said you don't believe in no God or no spirits, then. 
That's yeah. right. So if you don't believe in no God, no spirit, then you won't be celebrating Halloween. Well, I also don't believe in Spider-Man, but that's what my son is dressing up as. Yeah, but then, I mean, but then you, you, but we you, go around and we have fun on the holiday. We watch the movies. But, we go around trick or treating, collecting candy. Okay, that but, doesn't mean you have to believe in devil worship. I don't think you believe in you devil know, worship, I, but then, like you were saying, you, you go to the movie. If you celebrate something, that means you believe in it, though. No, it doesn't. It, it, doesn't, it means you believe it. No, though. it doesn't. No, it no. doesn't. <laughs> like as, like you said, you go see the movie Spider Man. Do you think Spider Man actually exists? No, ain't no Spider Man exists. Because exactly. Exactly, I don't see nobody, but, we I don't see nobody watch, but we did watch the movie. I go out and watch movies. I was a big fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer was on. That doesn't mean I think it's real. Halloween and Christmas and stuff like that, they're fun holidays. You get time off work. You go see family. You have Candy. parties and stuff like that. It's great. You know, I don't have to believe in it all to think, you know, to go along with it. So, um, anyway, you still there? Yeah. Okay. But if you're celebrating... That's telling you that's that's like evidence right there that that you believe about <laughs> Halloween about spirits. No, so if you ain't no. okay. Look, if you can't believe me saying that I don't <laughs> believe in spirits, then <laughs> yeah, then what else am I supposed to do? Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, we have to let that caller go. Um, apparently, not getting the point. Again, yes. it's fun to celebrate. It's fun to have parties and go hang out with people. So yeah, when I get off for Christmas, I'm gonna. Actually, it sucks this year. I'm not getting off for Christmas. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I go see family, go see friends, have a party. Doesn't mean I have to believe in all, you know, what it was based on. So, anyway, uh, a couple minutes left in the show. Let's go <coughs> on to Daniel. Are you there? Hey, what's up? Uh, not too much. What you all got right. for us? Uh, hey, I just want to comment about, like, the previous caller. Um, yeah, you don't have to, like, believe in anything to celebrate it, you know? Yeah. Like, the Red Sox just won. I, I celebrated it, so... <laughs> <laughs> but I they actually the Red exist. Sox. They exist. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but I don't like to worship them. Good point. True. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, like, I'm kind of atheist, but, like, I don't know, like, okay, it's cool and everything, like, y'all have this organization and everything, but at the same time, like, getting together and, like, talking about the absence of gods and, like, holding meetings and having a website, <laughs> it makes it look like you're a religion. Okay. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we, yes, we get that a lot. It's supposed to be the absence of religion. And that is um, <laughs> <laughs> just kind of funny, actually, uh, because that's not what we do. Um, we have this TV show, and, you know, we do things like this that kind of get the idea out there and get the word out there. Um, as a group, though... If I go to a meet, you know, I went to the meeting this morning, not a word was said about religion or atheism, really. Very little. Um, it's just a lot of people hanging out who have the same kind of ideas and beliefs, but it's just fun to get it's, together and It's do a stuff. bunch of guys so. and girls who happen to not believe in God and, and would like to hang out with other people and have casual conversations without the assumption being made that you, ha that you must go to a church, and if you don't, then you're bad. Exactly. We're typically... You know, members of the group are typically very well read. Right, we well, get I mean, um, we get together so. and, and play games every Monday night at my exactly. house, and not a word about religion is spoken. Okay, okay, yeah. that's so. cool. I mean, you could be like a social social organization, but when you have the yeah. idea behind it that everything behind everything you do is absence of God, yeah, then yeah. it does make it look like a religious organization. Yeah, yeah, and that's not at all. I mean, this the atheist community of Austin. Uh, education is a big part of it, and that's why we have the TV show and stuff like that. But a huge part of the group is purely social. It's right. just to be able to meet other people, go hang out, have coffee, have tacos on Thursday night, play games Monday night. Just a social group, social organization. And, you know, some of it is uh, sort of political activism in a way. I mean, yeah. you know, we uh, openly support the separation of church and state, which a lot, not a lot of groups out there do. Uh, so, but but those those functions are kind of separate, actually. I mean, some people are interested in the political yeah, stuff. Yeah. Some people are interested in the social stuff. It's just kind of a way for people to get together with like-minded people and figure out things that they want to do. Yeah. Okay. Just, I'm just really I don't get under, I don't understand why you have to go under the name of the banner of the atheist community. You know, like why not? I mean, you could go like under some social organization. You know what I mean, like. Um, yeah. And I again, know, I like I like this organization. Um, I actually found it when I first moved to Austin, uh, soon after I moved here. Um, and actually, I caught the TV show at the time, 
And it just looked like some really intelligent, some good, some good conversation. And that's why I said, well, let me go down and meet them. I mean, it looks like intelligent folks. And so that's what I went for is just to get some really <coughs> good, deep conversation. And like I say, okay, there's a lot okay. of people in this who are very well read, not, not just on religion, but just on you know, anything you care to you know, pick up as a topic. And so being able to have conversation with people that are, you know, really deep. You know, I mean, you're really talking about some serious stuff here. Um, as far as, like, philosophy? I enjoy that. As in terms of religion, politics, uh, worldviews on anything you care to mention, the uh, last Buffy episode, whatever. Um, like that's say, over. That, that was a couple years <laughs> back, true, but sad losing, sad loss. Um, yeah. But like I say, it's it's a lot of fun people. We have a lot of great conversation. It's it's some really friendly people, and so that's why I go there. Not so much because it's an atheist organization, but just because they have some great people involved in it. Well, that's cool and everything. Like you know, you get to meet all your friends, and like y'all get together and everything. Yeah. It's just I'm just I just don't understand. You you come under the banner of the atheist organization. I mean. You could go under. It works. That was just the lead. That'd be totally cool. Yeah, that was that was just. We got the thing that four kind of minutes, me. and I'd really like to hear what Mike has to say. Okay. I don't mean to rush you. Okay, no, that's cool. Okay, okay thanks for calling right. though. But thanks yeah, for yeah. calling. Okay, bye. And like I say, any atheists out there who do want to come down and meet us and see what it's all about, uh, we have the Crescent City Beignets meeting. Go to our website and get details on that. Uh, we're going to go to Mike. You there? Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm reading my uh, American Heritage Dictionary here. Yes. And for atheism, it's from the Greek atheos, where A means without and theos is God. So basically, it's without God. So yes. is any goddess of wisdom mentioned in there? Not at all. Oh. You have to go look up a theme for shot. that. And, uh, what a disappointment. Uh, Athene is a sort of a, a root for that. I mean, it has nothing to do with uh, Athena at all. I mean, just goes to show the guy who got that from some Christian book that, uh, you know, they're prone to misrepresent to... Yeah, actually, you know, it makes sense that they would have the same root, because uh, Theos would be, would be uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> it, so, so basically, I mean, it just is about God. Now, for the person, the, a woman who called earlier talk, when they talk about Jesus and to any Christians, I would like for them to, uh, at some point, get on the Internet or any place and look up Mithras um. and, uh, you know investigate that God and call back in and explain why they believe in Jesus and not Mithras. Yeah. I mean, Mithras was, uh, quote, uh, existed, in quote, before Jesus. Uh, and Jesus is basically just a clone of him. Uh, yeah, he was before born on December 25th. Of he a virgin mother. Virgin mother, died on a cross, all these came different back to life. Exactly. I mean, basically, Jesus is just from Mithras. So people yeah. calling about Jesus, you know, have them look up Mithras to explain why they be they believe in Jesus and not Mithras. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, exactly. the main reason I want to call just such you know, that atheism is basically without God. Yep. Okay, thanks. Good Kinda show, guys. Not. Thanks a lot right. for calling. So. We are not going to have time to answer James' question in a minute and a half. Uh, let's go on. Um... Whoa, yeah, where yeah. did all this stuff come from is uh, what we have Instead, James, so. uh, the question is, where did all this stuff come from? We'd like to uh, refer you to the website talkorigins.org, which will be showing up on your screen in a minute. Yep, they have you facts. Can and learn all you want to about that there. fascinating subject. Also, our website, atheist-community.org, has a fact page on there with some frequently asked questions. Um, which is extremely well written. It covers a lot of stuff. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, if you did not get a chance to get on the air or you're watching this some other time, uh, we also have an email address, tv at atheist-community.org. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and write us. Um, we reply to pretty much all emails, and if it's something uh, good, we'll bring it on the air, read it out, and reply to it live on the air. Tuesday, November 2nd. Yes. Go vote. Go vote. Get your word out there. That would be a good thing. For whoever you want to, of course. Exactly. Um, and a uh, final reminder, any atheist, atheist-friendly people, Crescent City Beignets, every Sunday, 1130 in the morning, 6th Street, couple blocks west of Lamar. Come out there, meet us, get some good donuts and some good conversation. Um, well, thank you very much, Russell, for coming on. And thank you for having that. me, and thank you for having me. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone, have a good Halloween. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will see everyone next week. Bye, everyone. With a new president in office.